The following program is paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Fresno on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Craig Barton. Good morning, Central Valley. I am your host, Craig Barton, and welcome to the Real Estate Radio Network, the most important hour of radio each week here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to bringing some rational thought to this crazy world that we live in and helping you to rebuild Central Valley's housing and credit markets. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice, and that's exactly what you're going to hear every Sunday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. right here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Would you stop playing with your phone for crying out loud? We're we're getting to business here. Wow, sorry. Hold on. I'm almost done. (laughs) Dot com. I'm so glad dot, dot, dot com is dot, dot, a one button on my phone. It's a one button phone. on your iPhone. Yeah, it is. It is. Sorry. Oh, Hi, my Greg. gosh. Good morning. Happy Sunday morning, Good morning Michelle. Johnny. Thanks for joining us. Finally. Thanks. Thanks for Good having me. Good morning, Johnny. Me. How you doing, buddy? Bells. Yeah, we got a thumbs up. I on. think it's a good morning. It's a good morning. Yeah. How Don't you doing? start singing. You know what will happen. I'm doing great. Hey, yeah. good morning. Yeah, lots of good stuff we're going to cover today. Excited. Yeah. Excited about today's show. Are you percolated? And can I just say, yeah. it's, it's kind of nice it's kind of nice. I, you haven't told them yet, but it's kind of nice not having a guest. <laughs> no offense. We love our guests. But at the same time, I've got you all to myself. I'm like, I got Just... Craig and Johnny all to me. <laughs> all to me. <laughs> you know, that's, that could be dangerous. <laughs> that stingy voice in the studio, that's mm-hmm. Michelle Pettiscavalli, our special guest. <laughs> oh, hi. Yeah, they didn't know who I was. Nice. Thanks, boys. Oh, uh, Michelle is a licensed realtor and a trusted friend. Friend. Don't say, yeah, I'm a trusted friend and a license. It's a real estate license, just so everyone's aware. Yeah, no, no, she is licensed. She's I do. licensed to kill. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kill it today, let me oh, tell you. Oh, my gosh. Well, Michelle, the Real Estate Radio Network gives us, you and I, um, each the opportunity to reach so many people efficiently each and every week for one full hour, just you and me. And, and our Sometimes lovely, a guest and our, or two yeah, or ten. Exactly. Yeah, uh-huh, well, yeah. our goal with the Real Estate Radio Network <laughs> is to get you, our listeners, the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back home. Atta girl. Good we're job. You're excited. Well, yeah, because I'm playing on my phone while we're on the yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, focus, 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 focus. Well, you know, Michelle, I'm excited about today's show. We're going to take a look at some of our questions from our listeners, and I'm telling you what, the questions are getting um, getting pretty interesting. They I, are. We have some smart people out there. We have I love some, it. Yeah, no, last I mean, week we had, we had somebody that was kind of devious, or at least it felt Well, bad. I don't know that they were devious. I think maybe there's a lot of unknown stuff that people mm-hmm. just, until you ask, you really don't know how it rolls. And a lot of people going through transitions. Sure, for most reason. definitely. So, yeah, no, I don't think it was a dumb question. I think it was actually probably very educational for a lot of our folks. Yeah. Well, we're also going to take a look at the top ten ways. Last week we took, the top, took a look at the top Ten ways uh-huh. to get a buyer to hate your home, uh, and, and as as we said last week, just just do the opposite. Yeah, because let me tell you, I saved that. And odors were number one. Odors were number one. Yeah. Dogs that meet Thank you at the you. door in the yeah. driveway. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was yep. number there two. You go. Lots of bad stuff. Well, today we're going to take a look at the top ten ways to get buyers to love your home, and if we have time, if we don't get waylaid or sidetracked, which we do often, we're also going to take a look at how to price your home if you are a seller, mm-hmm. or how to structure offers if you're a buyer. And Perfect. let me tell you. There's a lot of similarities. Mm. Really, uh, we're going to answer those and many more questions on today's show. So make sure awesome. you stay with us. If you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958. We would so love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online. And I'm telling you, you need to go to our website. You, you can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, Use press for keywords. Friend Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use press for keyword. KMJ call Valley Wide. To get connected to us. Can I make a comment Anytime. on our website? Yes, ma'am. On our website, they also can go listen to past shows. Yeah, I said that. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
So well, deep in I thought you were highlighting <laughs> YouTube, guys. I thought you were highlighting. I'm sorry. Oh, Moving right gotcha. Along. No, That's, you can't. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing that up. You, you, mm, no, wow. thank you for bringing that up. You can listen to past shows. Yeah, I mean, all of them list out. Great like, content. It's some great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. All right, yeah. moving right along. Press four, Michelle. Uh, I saw that's what you were playing with. I was phone. playing with Press 4, press and I was four. actually kind of impressed that you are actually... I'm on the Press 4 website. You, Your picture is... That, I took that picture. That is an that, awesome that, photo that, of you here in the studio. No, that's, that's an old fart. You know what? We took pictures of, of me and Kate last weekend in the and studio And Johnny's here. in the picture. Does he know he's in the picture? I we probably shouldn't tell him. You could you could show him the, the photo. Johnny, you're right there on the Press 4 website. Oh, well, so I, hot. I, our listeners, I'm sure, are asking, what is Press 4? Well, first and foremost, let me ask the question. Have you, if you're one of our listeners, have you downloaded... Loaded Press 4. What's all the hubbub about as far as Press 4 and the app Press 4? Michelle, take it away. What's Press hey, 4? Press 4 is the most effective way that I'm aware of mm -hmm. to dial specific to a subject matter, whether it's on the radio um, or just informational that you're hearing in some capacity. Um, I haven't seen it on a billboard yet, but I'm thinking it could go on a billboard. It's going to be there soon. Yeah, soon. Trust me. And nonetheless, you can... Uh, effectively press one button, say the keywords, whatever they may be, whatever you're hearing that you're interested in, and actually have information pushed your way, whether it be a text, whether it be um, a person's dialing direct to Craig, or yeah. whether it be email information on our hot properties, whatever the case may be. So, it's a great advertising. Uh, it's a way to get information yeah. out to the consumer, out Absolutely. to the listener. So, K so let's give some examples to our okay. listeners. Well, first I have to... Well, let's let's say how they get it. They have to download the app. Oh, you got to download the app. That's Onto right. Onto your iPhone, your Droid, your whatever phone, your dumb phones. You can go to um, press 4com which is the website we're talking about. Yep. That's where I'm at. Where I'm seeing Craig's gorgeous face with Johnny. Oh my gosh! Yes, you, you so need glasses. I know, but you <laughs> stop. But that's my friend we're talking about. Okay. Um, but I will tell you when I in, when I researched press 4 mm -hmm. and I just Googled it. Yeah. It actually comes up with some of the keywords. Yeah. And I'm seeing some really interesting things. There's some there's some Russian uh, advertising out there using utilizing Press Four. There's New York. I mean, all, all over the country and the world, they're using Press Four to send information to those folks. So for let's tell our listeners. So to give you an example, KMJ call Valley Wide. Correct. You press your Press Four, your, your orange Press Four button on your smartphone. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, and obviously you have to download. Right, uh, you have to have it on your phone to download. Exactly, you have, you have to, to download push. and sign up. Right. So once you have the app on your smartphone, you hit the button, and it, and says, then it, it keyword, says What are your keywords? And I say KMJ, call Craig, and, and it, it calls dials you me. If I say KMJ, hot property, it's going to send me information on the property that we have just discussed on the air. It's going to text you. Yep. It's going to give you our contact information, mm -hmm. both phone number as well as website. Mm -hmm. It's also going to push to you um, a PDF about today's hot property. Correct. KMJ Call Kate. It's going to push you more information on about Kate Island uh -huh. and our market um, watch update. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So I, I actually was enjoying going to the www.press4.com yep. Press because I found it uh, you know, just kind of fun to do some research in when I found all those other keywords some of those keywords do list on the google site if you just hit in press for yeah so it's kind of interesting to see all the to see different... what everybody else is pushing yes yeah. exactly i mean seriously some of it was in other languages i thought it was really interesting <laughs> no i do i just think that's that's phenomenal well it's for a the great world avenue. for the world michelle one button really can't can do, it, do all. it all for the entire world you got that right well let's take a look at today's hot property we were just mentioning today's hot property well 6505 east lane avenue fresno california 93727 uh, major cross streets. This is Sunnyside. Major cross, cross streets are Kings Canyon and Armstrong. Um, it is out right across the street from what is it? Ja uh, no, Jefferson School. Mm -hmm. no. no, what's the I school out know. there? No, it's a Cambridge. It, it, this is this. What are the cross streets? You said it's it is a Cambridge home. Uh, it is uh, Kings Canyon and Armstrong. So Kings Canyon. So south of Kings Canyon. Um, east of Armstrong. This is a Cambridge home. It's a four-bedroom, two-bath, 1,876-square-foot home built in 2007. This particular property is eligible for FHA financing. There's nice. a, an FHA appraisal that's already been done. Mm -hmm. You can save your buyer uh, roughly 400 to $450. Can I, can I yeah. speak to that? Yeah, no, go for also, it. Um, FHA... When they when they do an appraisal, mm -hmm. that appraisal is available to those folks in the transaction. So you actually get a copy of it and get a look at it. And Most get definitely. A, get to confirm the information on, as, as the your lender. If they are utilizing FHA financing. Right, right. right. Which I find, yeah, that's awesome. Perfect. Yeah. And I only say that because we're going to speak to some appraisal 
questions later. Yeah, oh, yeah, that is that's one of our, <laughs> one of our listener questions. That's <laughs> yeah. for sure. All this for only one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars, which is also again the appraised value. Mm-hmm. This is a HUD home, um, and HUD will only consider owner occupant offers during the first thirty days. Um, during the first ten days, you don't have to kill yourself. You um, have time to get out, schedule showings with your agent on the eleventh day or 11th business day or the next closest business day, if it falls on a Saturday or Sunday, uh, HUD will open up offers as if they were all received simultaneously. And the highest net to HUD um, is the offer that's accepted. Keep in mind, folks, it is the highest net to any seller in today's competitive real estate market um, that will put really you in the driver's seat. If you'd like more information about today's hot property, Please give us a call anytime on our off number at 800-979-3958 or use press 4 keyword KMJ Hot Property. And we'll send you more information about this hot property right to your phone. Look for more hot properties each week right here on the Real Estate Radio Network. Well, Michelle, let's talk a little bit about finding your next home. Whether you're an investor, whether you are looking for a home uh, uh, as a primary residence, whether you're looking for a second home, let's say maybe you're looking for a home um, up in... Bass Lake or mm-hmm. uh, up in Shaver Lake. Mm-hmm. What's the most efficient way that you have found that it, when it comes time for helping a buyer, uh, buyer investor, whoever it might be, search for a new home? Absolutely, going to be working with your your trusted agent. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, um, the MLS, whether it be um, Visalia, Fresno, Shaver, wherever your agent is located, the MLS is going to give you the most up to date. Uh, quantifiable information mm-hmm. as it comes to market. In other words, don't think that you're going to get left. On yeah, you're not going to get left behind. Or you're going to get left behind mm-hmm. because, well, it's maybe, real time maybe the information data. that I'm getting from my agent isn't comprehensive as far as the market's concerned. And it's 99.9% of the information that's out there. That's available yeah, to us. that's available to I us. I mean, there are, there are situations where maybe somebody puts a, puts a property pending and it takes a day or so for them to put it in the system. But let me tell you, the MLS system that the agents use is the most effective resource source any of us unless you're a for sale by owner that's choosing not to utilize the right. uh, the the, uh, the assistance of mm-hmm. a um, of a licensed realtor right. um, that's the only reason why it wouldn't go on the multiple listing correct correct so uh, that is real time information as as we put it in clients have the ability to see it so that is the most effective and setting up a portal what mm-hmm. we call a um, web portal for a client based upon the search criteria uh, and the property that they're looking for in a specific area, again, it's the most timely and accurate mm-hmm. search that you can set up for them, and it emails them the moment that a listing comes on the market. Real, Real time. time. And you know what I find uh, really cool is that regardless of the agent you're working with, as soon as you see that property, mm-hmm. you have the ability to participate in the process, drive that property, call that agent, say, I want to so see critical. this yeah. property. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody asked me, you know, Michelle, you're an agent. How far ahead do you book appointments? I said, well, I can book an appointment a week away, but that doesn't mean that house that you want to see is going to be available right, a week away. Right. So really, that real-time access is what's so key and cru- crucial in this market I'm that we're living in. I'm available, but the property might not yeah. be. Yeah, so if yeah. the property came available today, by God, we better be available today. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of information out mm-hmm. there. Truly, a Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com. Um, simply put, there are just too many resources on the yeah. web that are not necessarily timely as well as accurate. Some of that Correct. some of that data is dated. Mm-hmm. There is an easier way. All you have to do is contact us. Um, contact Michelle at um, on our off-air number at 800-979-3958. She can set that search up for you. Uh, you can also go to our website at reofresnohomes.com if you like to drive the bus and you'd like to set up the search for yourself. Again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, please call us anytime on our off-air number at 800 800- 979-3958. We'd so love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online, and you can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube. Uh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Yes. <laughs> on YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use press four keywords. Friend Valley White on Facebook. Or use press four keyword. KMJ Call Valley White. To get connected to us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Again, press your orange four right. on your smartphone. And next thing you know, you're calling Valleywide. Well, after the break, we're going to take some questions from our listeners. Make sure you stay tuned with us. You are listening to The Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ.
This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958, and put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952, California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 Six zero. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, Michelle, I told you that after the break, we were going to take a look at some of our network, some of our Real Estate Radio Network listener questions. But one thing I wanted to mention real quick, we lost an icon this, this week. week. Yeah. Andy Griffith, legendary television actor Andy Griffith, dead at age 86. What a long, amazing life, huh? 86 years. Wow. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. I grew up with, with Andy and Opie and... And me! And <laughs> the, the whole, Andy raised you too, did oh, she? <laughs> and me! Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I tell you what. Um, Don Knotts. Yeah. Fun times, man. Don Fun Knotts. times. And Go, uh, is it Gomer? <laughs> Gomer Pyle. Gomer Pyle and Goober from <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> down at the little yeah. gas station. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Good times. So unfortunately... Uh, then he went Griffin. on to what, Matlock? Matlock. Oh, my gosh. I love the blue suit, the striped suit, the pinstripe suit. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Little, little in 1986, he returned to television with the long-running series Matlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was later awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President uh, George Bush. Amazing, awesome. Dead at 86, unfortunate. And for those people who are really young and you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you say under 12. Who's Andy Griffith, right? Oh, exactly. Dad, Ron is... Howard, yeah. one of our amazing uh, producers, yeah. directors, etc., worked on that show with. He was Opie. He was Opie Taylor. He was he the son. Was it was amazing. Uh -huh. right. Well, I tell you what, it's really exciting to get to this segment of our show because when we start talking about the, the quality of the questions from our listeners, it's really, really great. Because let me tell you, folks, if this one particular listener has a question, I guarantee you that you all, or <laughs> there's more than a couple of you out there that do have the same question. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. It says, hi, guys. We currently owe $223,452 on our home, and we estimate that the current value of our home is roughly about $150,000. Um, how long before we have equity again? All right. How many? 80,000. Yeah, 80,000. 80,000. Uh, That's just a math question, right? <laughs> $80,000. <laughs> you take... Uh, Two twenty three, and you subtract one fifty, and it's yeah. roughly eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, basically. Pretty much. That was good, Michelle. It's, hey, it's the least I can do. So what we've got here is we've got a home appreciation estimator, and um, if your current value of your home is is um, one hundred and fifty thousand, and let's just for the sake of argument, um, this year they're estimating that they're going to see uh, appreciation. Uh, what is it annual or? Uh, across the United States, right. roughly at a 1.6%. Right. Now, again, it, it's not specific to a market. This is an or this is a, uh, a United States right. number that they're estimating. Mm -hmm. So let's say 2%. If we say house is worth 150 at 2% appreciation annually. That's, yeah. Okay, now keep in mind, this is annual appreciation. It's just right. an estimate. It does not take into consideration principal reduction. In right. other words, if you're paying on your loan, mm -hmm. you are going to reduce your principal uh, At the and, same time. And the current estimate of value is just that. It's just an estimate. We didn't actually go in and comp this particular listener's property. But year one, it's worth 153 and that's after one year of appreciation at 3%. Well, after 15 years um, at a 2%, excuse me, ex at 2% right. appreciation, um, your house would be worth 201880 Okay, got to clarify. Okay. So we start at 150000 Correct. We grow by 2% every year. Correct. 
in 15 years were only at 201? Correct. 880? So mm-hmm. almost 202,000. So I'm still $20,000 upside down. Correct. And, after 15 years. And you also have to take into consideration how much That's principal you've reduced on that loan during well, that time. So let's say, say you've reduced... Twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay. We now you're down to two or three. You might be break even at that particular okay. point. Now that's fifteen years. That's a long time. Yeah. Now let's take into consideration a two and a half percent. After okay. fifteen years, you would be at two seventeen, two forty four. Mm. Okay. So now, our national economy and, and the growth of our national economy is going to affect this tremendously, which is almost, what Kate's been talking about. Um, most definitely. Most definitely. What a cool calculator at, to be able to. At 3%. And we can uh-huh. share this with our listeners, too. All you, all you have to do is call us on our offer number, 800-979-3958. We'd be happy to send this to you. It's just a simple uh, Microsoft Excel uh-huh. spreadsheet. Um, after 15 years, at 3% appreciation, 233695 We break even. woo Yeah, exactly. If you had an interest-only loan and you paid nothing down on your principal after 15 years, 223, you're at 233. You're back where you started. You're back where you're, wow. you got a little bit of equity. <laughs> now, again, the intent of this particular question, I think, or this particular estimator, it's it's really clear, uh-huh. is if you're upside down as far as your property is concerned right at the moment, it, granted, you can use this. If you buy a house today, you buy it for 125 and at 3%, what's my house going to be worth in 15 years? Right. It's kind of a nice little tool to take a look at what if. But flip side of the coin is this. If you're upside down right now, right. based upon what this listener said, really, is it your goal to stay in this house for 15 years? Because it might force you to make that difficult decision. Right. It might be time to sell. Well, and I think you and I were discussing when we were prepping for the show, if someone just put their you know, kindergartner into school, they may not be in a position where moving is, is one of the There's options they want to consider. No hardship. Exactly. They can make their payment. And they're going to be there 15 years. So yeah. for them, breaking even is satisfactory based on mm-hmm. what their lifestyle and situation is. We're willing is. to deal with that. Right. We're willing to deal with that variable. Yeah. But let's, let's talk about some of the others because I know one of the other questions we had um, came from – some folks who are hearing wind of short hail, yeah, short short mm-hmm. sale news from coworkers and what, and a lot of negative short sale news from coworkers. In other words, we had heard so. Uh, second question was, uh, we had basically heard that the short sale process was painful. Mm-hmm. Period. Right. Painful. Period. <laughs> right. And that was our their, our prime motivating factor as to whether we actually listed our home. Well, if it was a situation where you listed your home 2007, 2000, and in 2007, if you said short sale to a service that they're like, uh, buddy, um, pound sand, walk yeah, us to your hat exactly. floats, um, we're not going to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. 2008, 2009, even 2010, the short sale process was not short. It was quite long and could potentially be quite painful. I think the the most painful thing about the short sale process today is setting the right expectation as far as the seller's concerned. Because the basic information that you submit to the servicer, it's a financial package, uh, W-2s, tax returns, pay stubs, asset information. Uh, you complete the short sale or hardship package. It's submitted to the servicer. The servicer then submits it to the investor and determines whether to approve it or not. The main thing that you as a seller need is patience. Right. Pure and simple. Right. Because there is nothing difficult. This is not like running wind sprints um, out at track practice and running until you puke. It is just simply this, setting the right expectation for the seller that you just need to be patient. It's set it and forget it like Ronco. But uh, I think in 07, 08, 09, even, as you said, 2010, mm-hmm. agents were not as involved with this process as they are now. So we actually work very much so on behalf of both buyers Mm -hmm. and sellers to intervene and assist with the process where it was all very new back then. And And so everyone was kind of wandering and uncertain. And we were dealing with servicers who who weren't clear and concise with what was necessary. They were still creating rules and and agenda in-house. And we have a lot of things on our side now to help us move these transactions forward. So people should not fear them. And so your calculator is amazing as far as if somebody does those numbers and then decides, hey, I think this is what we need to do in order to mm-hmm. start over. Because it is a starting over sure. of sorts. Um, then the short sale may be the way to go and it, right. not to fear the process. Sure, sure. Uh, again, you have an advocate and a realtor that is going to represent you, mm-hmm. that's going to contact the servicer, that's mm-hmm. going to help you as far as completing the paperwork, um, and that will handle all the communication. And realistically, when it comes right down to it, there is a little work that goes into it, but mm-hmm. it's mainly the realtor, exactly. your, your real estate professional, that's so going to do all that work. Someone. Absolutely. And 
as the seller, just be patient. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. be patient. Um, last question. <laughs> this question came from another listener. It was really interesting because um, this listener asked, why is it that we have seen that Fannie Mae properties, and how do you tell whether it's a Fannie Mae property? You can either check public record to see, and that's really simple to do, or there's a writer on the sign that says Fannie Mae Home Path yeah, Financing. Fannie, that's a dead it. giveaway <laughs> that it's a Fannie Mae property. Why is it that Fannie Mae properties seem to be hot, priced higher than other properties in the same neighborhood or surrounding market. Mm -hmm. Michelle, take it away. Why are they? (laughs) Yeah, why are they? I'm not really sure why they are, honest (laughs) to God. That's that's the mentioning of the HUD home having an appraisal done. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you've been doing this a day or two longer than me. What's that, correcting you? Yeah, well, both, actually. Um, (laughs) But when we talk about HUD homes, we talk about the fact that they've had appraisals done. Mm -hmm. When we talk about a B of A property, for instance, we know that an appraisal and or broker price opinions, which Correct. are not appraisals, but uh-huh. are an evaluation it's an of the market. an estimate of value. Right, by folks who work in this market mm-hmm. and are reviewing r- actual data are done. So we, we do them all the time exactly. for HUD as for HUD. well as uh, Bank of America, Bank of America. Mm-hmm. other institutions, etc. So when I see a Fannie Mae property go on the market, I'm right alongside this particular listener because I recently in the neighborhood where we have our office has two HUD listings. Mm-hmm. We have a Fannie Mae property that just went on the market fifty thousand dollars above market, and smaller than our largest property smaller. in the neighborhood. Now it was I, appraised at one fifty. Exactly, and ours have been appraised very, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. concisely. Right. Additionally, ours do need some work there. HUD properties. Sure. So maybe they need sure. uh, some some paint, carpet, maybe some fencing, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are not deficient to the in tune any of $50, way. $50. Like no. To an extreme amount of money. So $50,000, now the Fannie Mae property had some paint and some carpet, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm not seeing where $50,000 um, well, is, is let me, the value uh, there. Let me throw increase. something out here real quick. So you've got Fannie Mae, and the comment was made to me uh, more than a couple of years ago that Fannie Mae asset managers were doing everything that they possibly could to help support property values or to help support prices. And and, and I respectfully mm-hmm. agree when I see that someone's putting paint and carpet in there and trying to make those fresh and new for new buyers. Mm-hmm. I can see where that would that would back that comment. Sure. But not to that tune. But not to the tune of fifty thousand sure. dollars. And that's the concern and this is a market this particular neighborhood we speak of uh-huh. All houses are priced outside of the Fannie Mae property, probably between one thirty and one fifty. And sure. we have a property that went on the market for one ninety some. So first thing, you're representing a buyer as an agent, or or, or you're representing a buyer, and and you take the buyer to see that particular property. Mm-hmm. Inventory's tight in today's market, sure. so you'll look at anything with a price. Sure. So you go out and take a look at the property. Wow, really nice. Got mm-hmm. brand new carpet. Got right. new, brand new paint. Um, what's the list price? This list price is one night. What was it? One ninety and some change. One ninety and some change. Um, if your agent is asleep at the wheel, uh, and your assumption is that hey, I'm a pre-approved up to 200, and I like the house, um, let's submit an offer. Well, really, what should happen in that particular instance? What's the first thing? Your agent, if you like the property, your agent should comp the property to see right. where's that particular property at based upon market. Right. Um, so why is it that we've seen as of late so many Fannie Mae properties coming back on the market? Well, let, let me just th- this is just a little guess here. Fannie Mae has what's called or such a thing or a financing vehicle called home path financing. Mm-hmm. Home path financing does not require an appraisal. So if it doesn't require an appraisal mm-hmm. and it doesn't re- require an appraisal with any lender if it's home path financing because it's all sold to Fannie Mae. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what ends up happening? You offer 190 and some change on that particular property. No appraisals required. What happens to the property values around if that one house sells in that neighborhood? It sets a new high mm-hmm. as far as market comparables. Right. And guess what? Indirectly. Mm-hmm. Indirectly. Well, directly as well as indirectly. Mm-hmm. Directly, Fannie Mae has supported values based upon that particular non-performing asset. And then the flip side of the coin is, what about the rest of the neighborhood? Well, guess what? If there's any additional Fannie Mae uh, comparables within a half mile radius um, that are of like construction with uh, as this particular property is or compared to this particular property guess what they've just helped themselves out as far as helping to support or keep property values from deteriorating and in, in a market where there's a lot of competition right at the moment 
Um, this is just one additional sort of pressure that we're seeing. We're seeing upward pressure on prices, not only just because of market inventories being down the 13, down in the 1,350 range on average on a daily basis in Fresno County. That is forcing buyers to do a lot of crazy things because there's multiple offers, not asking for seller concessions. Um, it's getting it's competitive. It it's is very competitive, competitive. But I'm going to say right now, on the air. Mm-hmm. If your agent is Here not showing you legitimate comps mm-hmm. for that neighborhood, you may be paying too much. Uh, uh, and that you bring up a really good and point. And that is our job as agents. I've had a, a quick conversation with an appraiser a few days ago mm-hmm. in regards to this. Our job as an agent is to get a ballpark figure for that neighborhood sure. to make it make sense whether you're listing it or mm-hmm. buying it. Yeah. If you are throwing offers out at mar- at asking price or above asking price and not doing your work, Mr. Right. or Mrs. Real Estate Agent, shame on you. Yeah. Because let's let's I mean that's how we got in this mess. So yeah. let's let's all Certainly. let's work with with the programs in place. And I'm just going to say an appraiser's job is to protect the buyer to include the institution. That's what they're for. Protect the buyer as well as the institution. The, exactly. Yeah. Is that what you so, meant? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So so let's make sure that. We as agents are working on behalf of our clients and the market. You got to know when to say when, Absolutely. and there's got to be some there's got to be some limits. And appraisal will help to set those limits. Absolutely. And and I'm guessing right at the moment, Fannie Mae is looking for Fannie Mae Home Path offers as opposed to FHA or conventional offers, which are going to require an appraisal, which means that that property that's listed at 190 and some change is going to come in at 160 or something. And, and like I'm that. not saying every Fannie Mae property you look at is that way, but we have seen some consistency. It's a little, right. it's a little. Uh, do your jobs. Let's do our jobs, guys. You got that right. Well, listen, we appreciate all the questions. Um, please again. Use press for keyword KMJ comment line and let us know what question we can help get answered for you. Again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or just questions regarding the information that we show or excuse me, that we share with you on our show, call us anytime again on our off air number at 800-979-3958. We'd so love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online and you can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network. Yes, I said you could listen to past shows (laughs) on the Real Estate Radio Network. On YouTube by going to I, our I, website. I didn't take my concerta today. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. All right. Focus. Focus. Go to our website at reo, fresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use press for keyword. Friend Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use press for keyword. KMJ call Valley Wide. To get connected to us anytime. We'd so love to hear from you. Well, after the break, we're going to take a look at pricing your home to sell. Um, if you're a if you're a seller, if you want to list your home, or as a buyer, how should you structure your offer? Well, make sure you stay with us. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. All it takes is one call to the professionals at Valley Wide Homes and you'll start building wealth in real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income producing investment property, let the experts at Valley Wide Homes help. There's never been a better time to get into the real estate market. Visit our website at reofresnohomes.com or call toll free 800 979 3958. That's 800 979 3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valley Wide Homes to work for you. Listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, Michelle, in today's competitive real estate market, the big question is what are you giggling for? I feel like I need to apologize to all our friends out there. Okay, that go I ahead. Scolded. I'm the- very sorry that I scolded you. You, it yes. sounds like you're talking to somebody. Susie, I'm sorry that I've Susie, scolded Ms. you. Susie, Miss Susie Agent and oh, Mr. Johnny boy. Boyd, I'm very sorry if I scolded you. I just take you said, it personally. said shame on you. I did a little bit, and okay. I'm sorry. 
All right. Let's well, move on kind now. of transitioning to <laughs> if you're a seller and you're looking to list your home, how much do you list it for? Uh, you know, I've had conversations with one kind of aggressive seller this last week and said I had, he had paid 306 for his property. And by gosh, that's what he was going to get for his 1,750 square foot home wow. and uh, in today's market because it's the best. And I, I totally believe him. I hadn't seen it yet. I totally believe him that it's the nicest thing on the block. But I told him, you're going to be really needing the top 1% of the market that's willing to pay more for that particular home mm-hmm. because they walk in and they say, wow, that's it. How much are they asking again? Oh, not a big deal. I've got 150 or 100 and a quarter to put down. Um, so not a big deal. Most important factor when selling your house is the price tag. In a competitive market, I tell you what, it is a seller's market in mm-hmm. today's in today's competitive market here in the Valley. Again, 1,350 roughly active listings in Fresno County. It means that there's more people standing at the curb wanting to place offers on your particular on your particular property. Mm-hmm. First thing you want to do as a seller um, is have your agent pull comparables, comparables you're looking for every similar home that was listed or is listed in the same neighborhood over the past six months. And I will say this, six months is a little bit too long. What you're really looking for is you're really looking for roughly the, the last 90 days. Um, and part of that is this, Financing and any appraiser, any appraisal that is going to be done on your property is going to look at the last 90 days. So keep in mind, today is looking at the last 90 days, but if it takes 60 days to sell your home, right, right. you're 60 days down the road, which there's another 60 days of comparables sure. that have had the opportunity to close. So keep in mind that that bullseye may be ever changing. In today's market, we're seeing prices slowly, slowly inch up. Um, Case Shiller, regardless of what Case Shiller says nationally, our little microcosm is what we are most, most concerned about. You also want to take a look at um, sold comparables mm-hmm. again within. You, you want to see what's active, what's pending, what is backup. Backup, all that typically means is that the agent is actively seeking backup offers. Um, uh, for whatever reason, they don't they don't have a, the warm and fuzzies about the offer that well, the seller accepted in the, the first place. I see them most commonly used, of course, is short sales because mm-hmm. in some cases a buyer gets in the transaction and then decides they change their correct, mind for some correct. time, usually a time sensitive issue. Yeah, most no definitely. Patience. Most yeah, no patience. No patience. Again, patience. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, sold comparables within the last ninety days. You also want to make sure that you're comparing similar square footage, and typically you're looking for roughly a deviation of nothing in excess of about ten percent, so plus or minus mm-hmm. um, 10% as far as square footage is concerned. You also want to make sure that you're comparing like to like or apples to apples right. because single story to single story. Um, exclude two story if your home is not a two story. If there's a lack of comparables in the neighborhood, then you may be forced to either going farther away than a half mile. Um, and, and to any of you appraisers that are listening right at the moment, don't get offended because I'm I'm practicing comping a property. It's not an appraisal. I we leave it to, to the, We leave to it to the professionals. Our that, job is to rough it. Our, we're we're well, this narrowing is, it. That's this is our called. Job. This is roughing. This it. is roughing it. Mm-hmm. You better believe that. And we also want to take a look at withdrawn and expired listings. And partly because there's a crime scene there, we want to figure out. So <laughs> why did that particular listing get withdrawn? Was it because it went to sale at the courthouse steps? Mm-hmm. Um, was it, um, or was there something else that was wrong as far right. as the property is concerned? Right. Did someone pass away in the property, which must be disclosed by law? Um, did the did the uh, listing expire? Most commonly, it's either because someone was asking too much, and maybe that was the case, or maybe the property did revert back to the mm-hmm. servicer because, or the investor because um, it actually went to sale at the courthouse steps. Taking a look at pending sales obviously is extremely important. You may be able to, as, a, as an agent, contact the agent that listed that particular property to get somewhat of a pulse in terms of, okay, well, um, you listed it at X, and give me an idea. Are you in contract right around there? Is mm-hmm. it higher? Is it plus or minus mm-hmm. um, 3%, 5%? Where are you at? Um, and also, did the seller um, give any type of consent? Session to the buyer for closing costs and prepaids. Um, active listings, obviously, because you want to know what your competition is. Absolutely. You really have to have an idea. <laughs> is it a Fannie Mae property? Yeah. Or a B of A property? Wow. Hopefully, you were listening Sorry. to the previous segment. Yeah. One of our listener questions <laughs> was, yeah, I'm is sorry. it a Fannie Mae property or is it a HUD property? <laughs> oh, wow. So it's extremely important you know what your competition is. 
Um, score footage comparisons, again, extremely, extremely important. You don't want to want to deviate uh, by more than roughly 10% unless you absolutely positively have to. Um, you may have to go farther out than a half mile because depending upon density, geographic density as far as a uh, neighborhood or subdivision is concerned, maybe you, let's say you get out of town a little bit where there's, uh, there's a little more uh, – acreage in between your home and the next person's home. You may have to go out up to a mile to yeah, find I mean, out something that's comparable. I mean, just in comparison, if you're going to do a, a two-acre parcel in the county, you've mm-hmm. got to compare it with other two-acre parcels in the county Correct. because they don't have the same city services that, it, that it, the, the county has. So Correct. you've got to, it's got to be apples to apples. And you've also got to make adjustments for mm-hmm. those as well if you're on a two-acre parcel or what have you. But we not being appraisers would yes. not know the adjustment. Again, <laughs> I am not very bright and I am, as Michelle said, <laughs> trying to rough it. The important thing is you want to get a feel for who your competition is Mm -hmm. now, what's in escrow right at the moment, and also what is closed within the last 90 days. And keep in mind that you get uh, 45 days down the road from the time that your property goes on the market if – actually, excuse me. um, If (laughs) If you were to sell it today, it it, would close in 45 days. Thank you. If if your property is listed for X and you have not gone through this particular exercise – then chances are your property may be priced too high. Correct. And and, and it can be priced too high. Mm-hmm. Um, and you hear folks all the time, well, I put in a $45,000 pool, rock feature, and so forth. I'm sorry, dollar folks. Dollar for but dollar, it doesn't exactly, work. Exactly. <laughs> it does not give your va- your property value dollar for dollar. You may have the nicest property on the block, and that is great. But any type of improvement that is for intrinsic value, meaning it makes me feel good. Right. Guess what? That's all, all it is. is. That's all it is. <laughs> it may help the marketability of your property, and I guarantee you it will. If you've got nothing but tens across that backyard, you've got a great pool, you've got a, <laughs> an outside barbecue, that's awesome. But you can't take it with you. Nope. You can't fill the hole back in. Um, and unfortunately, if you spent 45 you might get 12 to 15 in terms of an adjustment out of it best, best case scenario in terms of what you can garner for that particular property. And if it's not obs- an obscure item that you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, let's, t- I mean, we talked about Polo Ranch a while back. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, truly, let's be honest, you're not going to, you're not necessarily going to find a buyer for Polo Ranch unless they like horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, it takes a specific buyer. It takes buyer. a specific buyer mm-hmm. for each specific home, depending on what the The amenities benefit. of the property. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Totally, totally. So it's not a uh, it's not a super complicated process as far as how you price your home uh, or what type of offer you submit on a property. And again, if you're listing your home, mm-hmm. this is something the listing agent should prepare and discuss with you. Correct. This is part of your, and I tell you what, this is part of their um, competitive market analysis mm-hmm. that they give you. Um, part of their job. If if the expe- expectation that is set by um, an agent in a listing presentation is unrealistic. Eventually, no one wins. Mm -hmm. Really. Uh, Any agent can sit there and tell you that they think that your house is worth X. But if they are, if it doesn't really seem like it's tangible in terms of the numbers Mm -hmm. that they're able to show you on paper, then guess what? You're right. Mm -hmm. It isn't tangible. And um, you probably ought to seek um, the opinion of a couple additional professionals to see. It's like shopping for insurance. Absolutely. Talk to a few different agents. See. Uh, you, you want to do business with someone you know, you like, and you trust. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, when the day is done, you should be able to, to in today's market, get a fair and most definitely competitive price. Mm-hmm. The market's heading in the right direction. Um, so take advantage of it. And even though we're not appraisers, mm-hmm. and I don't want to be an appraiser. I don't either. Too many <laughs> I don't boxes. Want their job. It's, it's the, the form's too busy for it's my ADD. It's confusing. But nonetheless... <laughs> Every agent should be able to explain to you generally why they are coming up with the pricing they're coming up yep. for. And if they yep. can't, then that's a concern. Yep. So just, exactly. a, just a side note. Well, again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions um, or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958. We would so love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online and listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com to friend us on Facebook and get more information about past shows and upcoming content. Use press for keyword. Oh, sorry, friend Valley Wyatt on Facebook. I was just thinking that that's a great place for them to post questions. It is. I just sorry that was in my mind, which no, that's perfect. That's a caused me to slip. Great point. Or use press four keyword. KMJ call Valley Wyatt to get connected to us anytime. We would so love to hear from you. Well, if you're thinking about selling your home in today's competitive real estate market, and last week we talked about the 
ten, top ten things. You mean the odor and the dogs? Yes, the not odor and the dogs. Not, not to do house. as far as your home's concerned. Well, it, we're going to show you today the ten ways to make buyers love your home. Make sure you stay with us. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as its appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 122 Six zero. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Johnny, you know what? Our time up here is almost over, and I'm saddened. I'm, it, it's early Sunday morning, and I've got to go about my day. Just, yeah. Just... <laughs> Suck it up. Then. Suck it up, little camper. Nice. I'll take you to breakfast. All, All right. right. Well, like we talked about last week. Yeah, nice. Thank you. That was You're sweet. Welcome. All right. right. Like we talked about last week, the 10 ways to get buyers to hate your home. Mm-hmm. Odors, number one. Mm-hmm. Odors, bad. Whether the, whether it's yeah. bacon or whether it's pet urine. Yeah, well, I mean, Odors I think bad. they have a, a lot of recommendations. What about those those candles? The, yeah. The, the you, pretty candles. You, the, pretty the candles. smelly mm-hmm. pretty candles. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that's all right. That's a nice ambiance. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Dogs meet you in the driveway or at the door. Not a good thing. Dirty bathrooms. Guys, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> so put get the, the seat down. The yeah, thank you. Or, yeah, close it. That's even better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dimly, not, don't don't shut the bathroom, the bathroom door altogether. <laughs> Dimly lit rooms we talked about last week. In other words, brighten the doggone room up. Mm-hmm. Open up the curtains. Turn the air conditioning up or down, excuse me, to keep it cool. A house full of busy wallpaper. If you can do anything, get grandma's wallpaper out of the house. Damp, ba- damp basements. Hopefully you don't um, keep someone down in there against their will. Um, and uh, bugs, roaches, spiders, any type of inspe- insect, not good. Get rid of them. Or as you mentioned last week, <laughs> take them if you're the seller. Take, take them, them with you, you when <laughs> you're getting you. ready to show Field your trip. home. <laughs> Poor curb appeal. It's amazing what a little forest humus, some flowers, some plants in your front yard can do as far as curb appeal is concerned. Gutters with plants growing in them, <laughs> not a good thing. A gutter is not a pot <laughs> <laughs> or a place to grow um but all those from. leaves do eventually, yeah, eventually turn into mulch. Yeah. Yes, they do. Or they will tear down if mm-hmm. they accumulate enough. Mm-hmm. They'll tear down the uh, the gutter. And sellers who hang around. <laughs> Can take I answer any questions? Yeah, Can no, I help you? Can I help you? Yeah, no. Get out go of the house. Go work on that you know, car in the garage. Go get the mail. Oh, exactly. The neighbor, exactly. Whatever, but do. Yeah. Ten things you can do to, in general, help make buyers love your home. First and foremost, make a, make a great first impression. Yeah, I'm thinking um, a framed picture of me in the front of my house. Just saying. And that wow. candle with the fresh, smelly, you know. Bakery. So a candle and a photo of you. That's it. All right. I'm well, there you have it. And, it. and that's it. I'm sure there's nothing else. <laughs> after that. There's a few more things. Okay. And like you, I th- didn't you say earlier? Don't what, what you don't want to do as far as odors and dogs hey, is hey. put a put a picture of me in the foyer. Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, I kind of did say that. Thanks. But th- th- it says make the most of that first impression. Yeah, I make the, the smile. A well manicured lawn, mm-hmm. great curb appeal, neatly trimmed. Shrubs, a, cl- a clutter-free porch, extremely, extremely important. Invest a few hours for future dividends. Here's your chance to clean up your real mm-hmm. estate. Bottom line, less is more as far as how it falls on the eye as far as a potential buyer is concerned. Check your faucets. Check your bulbs. Replace all your bul- bulbs. Make sure that your faucets are not leaking. Um, don't shut out a sale. In other words, if your cabinets or closet doors stick in your home, make sure that they all work. Um, that might sound like a simple one, but honestly. I'm trying to say do- go get some WD-40. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm with you. 
Make the sure door's squeaky. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Think safety. If there's certain things in your home that potentially are dangerous, if you have a client that's bringing, uh, it's a family and they have small children, make sure that you think in advance of what are the things that you can do to take care of or prevent some sort of tragedy. Really, really important. Make room for space. Again, declutter. So, so, so important. Nobody wants to see all the pictures that you've got up on your fridge. Right. Take all those magnets down. Again, these are things that you see reiterated all the time on HGTV, Mm -hmm. Sell Your Home, any DIY, any of those networks. Um, But uh, less is way, way, way more. Consider your closets. Best thing as far as a closet's concerned is to make sure that you're organized. Um, if your clothes and all your all your goods are all just shoved into a closet and not organized, it doesn't show real well. I, I've been into some homes and shown yeah. some property in the last couple of years that you'd, you'd think the folks did not want to sell their home. There's dishes in the uh, mm-hmm. In the sink in the kitchen. When I say dishes, I mean in the sink, on the countertops. There's stuff just strewn everywhere. Wow. It definitely looks mm-hmm. lived in and smells even more like it's been lived, lived in. in. And there's a multitude of odors. Well, and here's the thing. If you're getting ready to sell your house, you're getting ready to move. It's okay to declutter yeah. and clean it up and throw everything you're not going to be using you, for the next couple months into boxes depend, and get them out of that house. It, it, very good point. You may have to uh, put stuff in boxes. You may have to get them into your yard. You may have to get them in the back of your truck. You may have to get them into your shed if you have a storage right. shed. Garage, you may have to get them whatever. into a storage, mm-hmm. uh, depending upon how much right. stuff, stuff you have. Um, it's so important. We showed a property this last week to some clients of mine, and uh, it was in 937 937- uh, one zero. It was a feeder to Bullard High School, uh, Barstow, west of Blackstone, between Barstow, excuse me, between Blackstone and Bullard, and or Blackstone and Maroa. Let me tell you, manicured mm-hmm. to a T. This was a show place, and Wasn't these folks it? were downsizing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, about twenty four hundred square feet on eleven thousand square foot lot. Um, it was absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a place that um, it was an older couple. They were um, in their late 70s, almost 80 years old. Um, This was the epitome of exactly what you want to see a client do as far as preparing. Their garage was, and the wife said, it just drives me up a wall that he has all this stuff and it's all saved. (laughs) Well, let me tell you, this guy was organized to the nth degree. And it shows that they really had their act together and that they did what they needed to do as far as the house was uncluttered. It was super, super clean. It was ready to sell and I wouldn't be surprised if I checked MLS again today it's gone. if it's gone I, I, sh- I showed one a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and I tell you what if we could have bought it lock stock and barrel yeah. it was that <laughs> it was that gorgeous in the way that they had set it up oh yeah same type of thing closets you, were immaculate you can tell when they've done their homework if mm-hmm. you're lazy about it if you're lazy about your life <laughs> I hate to say it but let me tell you hey I resemble that remark uh, thank you <laughs> all right good to know well make sure your bathroom sparkles uh, again uh, tip, top 10 things uh, that you don't want to do um, clean up your bathroom Room for Absolutely. Out loud. Make sure that uh, towels are put away, that it's all nice and neatly organized, no clutter, no uh, laundry on the floor. Um, create dream bedrooms. Extremely important. Create space. Mm-hmm. All right. Put all your stuff away. Again, less is more. Mm-hmm. Declutter. Okay. And light it up. So, so important. Um, w- when you talk about whether it's opening your blinds, whether it is um, adding maybe a lamp in the room, maybe it's uh, depending upon where the room's located. Sure, sure. Um, if you're able to bring natural light in oh, from so the different. exterior, mm-hmm. extremely important. Now, let's say you're showing the home and it's at night. Make sure you've made accommodations for that particular room. Uh, whether it be adding a couple light fixtures or, or however you bring light in. Mm-hmm. Again, if it's dark, you've got to still make sure that you bring light in and you've got to get all those doggone lights on and make sure you light it up because if it's not lit, it feels like a cave. Right. It doesn't show well and it doesn't give the buyer that perception that this place is spacious. Well, and they're looking for a home in most cases. Mm-hmm. So they want to be able to feel like this is an inviting place Mm -hmm. and so that's that's really key if you if you walk into a dark closet you're not really wanting to hang out in there well and and let me say this lastly as far as when and and i'm speaking to all you folks out there in radio land that are listening it's so important um you have to be as an agent respectful as far as the Mm -hmm. conversation when you sit down with them and you do your listing presentation because it's not just this is not a one-dimensional conversation Mm -hmm. um of in terms of price 
if you want to, as a seller, garner as much as you possibly can. Um, there are certain things that we need to be able to show you how you can do that. Mm-hmm. If you follow this list and you make sure that you've eliminated all of your odors and that you put your pets away, if you do have pets, um, you know, three out of every four folks might love a, an occasional dog, but maybe the fourth that's a really solid mm-hmm. buyer doesn't. Um, Getting your home prepared to sell is so, so important. And it's not being disrespectful. It's just being real. And it's it's like if you uh, – and I say this. If you wanted to put yourself in a position to get ready for a uh, – uh, you wanted to go to a, a big uh, uh, Fresno Association of Realtors dinner, um, wouldn't you want to get prepared? Would you, would you just want to slap on some jeans right. and, a, and a T-shirt right. and you know put a baseball cap on and – I know, you, I know you might, but hey, hey, no, <laughs> I re- you resemble that <laughs> I remark, resemble in, that remark in a too, big way. because I'm all about having fun with my clients. Yeah, it's it's extremely important. You have to be delicate as far as the conversation is concerned, but there really is a lot of little things that you can do to prepare yourself uh, to prepare your, prepare your house to sell. Well, and I think it's educating your seller mm-hmm. that it isn't them we're selling to. We're not selling to you or right. your. We're preferences. selling to the masses. We're Correct. selling to those folks who find this particular area, school, environment appealing. And mm-hmm. so we need to um, appeal to the most of those people that we can. Correct. And the most of them are going to be not interested in We're our, looking for a big demographic. Our personal items and what right. really stowing away as much as you can would be really mm-hmm. preferred. Correct. Well, I tell you what, for a free list of the Real Estate Radio's 90 ways to sell your home faster, um, use press for keyword. KMJ, sell my home. And we will send you our secret list. Is KMJ selling homes? Yeah, no. That's how it sounds. No. KMJ, sell my home. <laughs> Again. Well, you know what, though? On that note, yeah. if they want KMJ to help sell their home, they just got to call us. Yeah, there you go. Well, again, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime on our off air number at 800 979 3958. Again, we'd love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online and listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube by going to our website at REO. FresnoHomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use press for keyword Friend Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use press for keyword KMJ Call Valley Wide. To get connected to us anytime. We would so love to hear from you. Well, a big special thank you to Michelle hey, Pettis-Cavalli. It was great just yeah. you and I today. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Head you all to Are myself. Are ready for breakfast? Me, you, and Johnny. Right all on. All right, Johnny, let's go get breakfast, buddy. A special thank you also to Johnny B behind the mic. Johnny, you always make us sound so good. Remember, our goal at the Real Estate Radio Network is to get you, our listeners, the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back, back home. home. Don't forget to tune into the Real Estate Radio Network next Sunday at 7 a.m. right here on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Make it a great day, Central Valley, and we will see you next week. The preceding program was paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network.